Hi friends, today we're gonna be planting some seeds and we are gonna be talking about the top questions that get asked about um, starting seeds and issues with seeds sprouting or dying or <laughs> grow lights or bringing them outside, all sorts of things. So hang out with me, we're gonna plant some seeds and we're gonna talk about seed starting. I have a lot to plant today. I'm planting all sorts of different herbs and then I've got some cabbage and some lettuce and greens to plant today. So as you can see, I've got four whole trays <laughs> worth to plant. But I've gotten a couple questions about seed starting in general and it made me wanna do this video about seed starting because it's one of those things once you've done it, a year or two and you've had success, then you don't even give it a second thought because you know the drill. But it can be really, really overwhelming or if you've done it a while and then all of a sudden you're encountering a new problem, it can just stifle your whole garden season right here at the start. So we're gonna be talking about several of the questions that I get along with just some frequently asked questions. First, does it matter what kind of dirt I start my seeds in? And the answer is yes. Um, you want a couple of things in your seed starting mix. You want nice soft soil that the, the seeds can sprout up in easily. This often means that potting soil, just normal potting soil, isn't just a great option. You want, and it's not that seeds can't sprout in potting soil, they certainly can, but if you're starting them inside, you want to give them their best chance. And that generally means you want, a, you want an actual seed starting mix. Now I have a video where I share my own seed starting mix, and I will link that in the description below, but I want to make known that this year I've had a lot of trouble sourcing, um, particularly vermiculite for my seed starting mix. So um, I think I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board on that. This all actually is just a bagged seed starting mix, unfortunately, um, because I only have very little vermiculite left and I'm saving it for my tomatoes and peppers <laughs> because I know it's a tried and true. And, and, and the difference in my homemade seed starting mix and just a bagged seed starting mix is that the homemade kind you can make to retain a lot more moisture. Uh, with this bag stuff, it'll work great, but we're gonna have to be maintaining it and babying it and making sure it's watered a lot more often. So yes, it matters what you use to start your seeds. So just if you're curious, I have two different kinds of yarrow I just planted. This was Ella Campane, and then this is just a regular old thyme. And next I have a few varieties of Echinacea. Uh, so another question that I get, and I guess it goes hand in hand with the next question. First of all, do I need grow lights and what kind of grow lights do I need? Um, there's a lot of people that will just go buy them off the shelf at Home Depot and certainly you can. But the thing that you need to really be aware of when you do that is to make sure that they're bright enough to support your plants. You don't have to get the fanciest grow light. A lot of the full spectrum grow lights, like I have full spectrum grow lights, they're really not terribly expensive. And I got them off Amazon and I love them and I will never go back. Um, because there's certain features about them that I love. Uh, they have a little nub that you can raise and lower them. You wanna make sure whatever grow lights you get, you can raise and lower. You have some functionality to raise and lower them. And mine are on a chain and we raise and lower them as needed. And I'll explain why when I answer the next question because you don't want leggy seedlings. But um, to answer your question, full spectrum really mostly are for the blooming flowers and the seeding plants. When you're dealing with seedlings, you're not really gonna need that full spectrum as much as when you're dealing with um, growing flowers all the way out, growing plants all the way out. <clears throat> so it's not 100% necessary, and there are lots of grow light options out there. But I will say this, if you get 
a shop light that's a nice shop light, it's probably gonna cost about the same unless you get a really good deal as some of the, the ones on Amazon. They're not terribly expensive and they come in a set. Pay attention to that also. If lights come single or if they're gonna come as a set. Um, you probably want to be able to daisy chain your lights together because you're gonna be hooking up more than one light. So you wanna be able to hook them together so that you're not using, like if you have seven lights, you don't wanna use seven plugs. You wanna be able to hook the lights together. So that's another feature to look for when you're looking for grow lights. Um, most of the features, like I said, are not necessarily make it or break it when it comes to growing your plants. They're just for ease of growing yourself. Also, another thing to make sure of is that the grow light fits your shelf. Whatever shelf you're growing on, you need a grow light to fix it. Really the top two things that are gonna affect your seedlings when looking for a grow light. Number one, you want a bright enough grow light. And I would say 2000 is bare minimum, 3000 lumens um, will be ideal or, or higher. Um, and number two, you want the capability with your grow light to be able to raise and lower that. I've got some catnip. The other thing that gets asked a lot is what about leggy seedlings? Um, a lot of times people's seedlings will just hopelessly get super leggy. They'll shoot up, they'll be long and spindly, and then they'll just flop over. Uh, what do you do when you get a leggy seedling? What is causing the leggy seedling? The number one reason for leggy seedlings is light. Like I told you when we were talking about grow lights, you want a light that is able to move up and down above your seedlings. Sometimes you can have a really strong grow light, but it is never as strong as the sun itself. You want to make sure that that grow light is just a couple inches above your seedlings or they're going to reach for it. The same as if you try to put your seedlings in a window, you need really direct sun from that window or your seedlings are going to start stretching out. So that is the number one reason for leggy seedlings is that light. It's it's almost always a light issue. So make sure you're putting forth the effort to really move that grow light as it goes. With tomatoes that get super leggy, you have a chance. Uh, you can bury them down a little deeper, but most plants, if they get leggy, they're a lost cause. So you really want to avoid that if possible. Let's see, for the rest of the tray, I've got some mullen and I've got some hyssop two different varieties, anise hyssop and Korean golden jubilee hyssop. Another common question is what if the seeds don't germinate at all, right? What if you put them in and you baby them and they just don't germinate? <laughs> well, here is something to consider. There are two things a seed needs to germinate. They need moisture and they need heat. So if you have your seedlings out in the cold or even in chilliness and it's not entirely warm, then you're gonna have trouble. That's why they make seed mats. Now here's the cool thing about seed mats. You can just get a couple for your grow setup and they're not expensive at all and they just add a little bit of heat. Once your seeds sprout, they don't need that heat. So you can take them off and you can, you can have that seed mat ready for the next batch. And that's what I do. I don't have a heat mat on each of my spots. I just have a few heat mats and I'll put these four on heat mats and then once they sprout, I'll move them right off so I can move something on to, else onto that heat mat. Um, but that is a big reason for lack of germination. Maybe you're not keeping your soil moist enough um, the other reason might be that you have low germination rate on your seeds for whatever reason. Maybe they weren't kept well, maybe they're really old, maybe they're just bad seeds. Um, if this is the case and you have spotty germination and it's just that you have seeds with low germination, don't throw them out, just plant more seeds into the container. So if your germination is 50%, well, plant 
four seeds. You know, normally I'd put two seeds in each just to 100% make sure I get, but if I know that my germination is half, then I'm gonna do double whatever I normally would plant and hopefully end up with some plants. So you still can get, but I would say the number one reason for seeds not sprouting is going to be because, because of lack of heat and good conditions. Let's see, in this tray, I have some bee balm, some St. John's wort, cumin, sweet majorum, tarragon, mint, caraway, feverfew, zebrun shallots, and dinosaur kale. It's time to start the kale. I, it's a lot, I have, like I said, I have a lot of um, herbs in this and this won't be the case every year. We're only a year into living here. I don't have big established uh, perennial herb beds, so I'm having to continually focus on establishing those. Um, but once I get them going, they'll be great. Another question is about mold on the soil. A lot of times when you're growing in, um, inside and you're growing and you're babying your seeds, you'll see a little green layer of mold on top. And is that okay? And is that, but here's the deal. A lot of times that's not going to even bother your seedlings, but it is a sign that something is amiss. And so you don't want to just ignore it. It means that there's too much moisture. It can be really tempting to keep the seedlings just soaked all the time. And you, and you don't ever want to let them dry out all the way. But there can be a point of too much water. So you, you want to be building strength in your seedlings. And if you give them too much water, you're stunting the growth of their roots. Their roots aren't having to reach down very far at all to reach that water. And so you're not really developing good, strong roots in your plant, which is counterproductive. So you want to really be sure on the surface, you're not watering a ton. You can spritz it every once in a while, but the best way to water your seedlings actually is to get a tray like this underneath. I don't know if you can see, but these lift up and then there's a solid tray underneath and you actually pour water into the bottom. Now, I, and then you pour water into the bottom and then you let them sit in that water for a couple of hours and you dump it out. You don't want to let them sit in that water forever because that means that it, that can lead to oversaturation. And you can eyeball this. If you live in a drier climate, you might need to let them sit in it longer. That's not a hard, fast rule, but you do want to keep an eye and make sure that your, your, your soil is moist, but it's not just sopping wet all the time. The only time you really want the top of your soil just kind of wet as possible is when you're germinating your seeds. And that's when we put a humidity dome over the top, really lock in all that moisture and get get those seeds started. But after that, your plants kind of need some air. Your plants can get overwatered and it can cause die off and your little babies can just all of a sudden one day just go and die. And you don't want that. So that's while the algae itself is not necessarily a bad thing for your plants, it's an indicator of way too much moisture on your seedlings. Another question is, how long should I leave my grow lights on? So you have baby seeds and it seems like more light better, right? Well, that's not necessarily the case. Actually, plants do most of their growing during their sleep cycle. I don't know if you actually call it a sleep cycle, but during the nighttime cycle, they're collecting energy during the day through their leaves, right through the light. And then at night when that light is gone, they're not collecting energy anymore. They're putting that energy into 
actually growing. And so you really want to give them that day night cycle and exactly what the perfect number is, is really a cause for debate. But I tend to favor whatever my daylight cycle is doing outside when it's um, appropriate to plant that plant out. So for instance, um, if I'm doing like the later in the season I get, maybe the longer that grow light cycle lasts, but typically 12 on, 12 off, that's a good generic place to start. That's gonna give the plants plenty of time to really catch up, to breathe, to uh, do what they need to do. And you'll actually be amazed at how much growth from day to day happens overnight. And a question that we've gotten that um, is really a frequently asked question, especially if you've never grown seeds inside or you know, if you've only ever bought seeds from um, plants from a nursery and just went and gone and stuck them in the ground, uh, you may not know this, but plants have to be hardened off, you called it. Um, when you have them in this greenhouse environment or under your grow lights and you've been babying them and you've been taking extra good care of them and then all of a sudden <laughs> you stick them outside in the blazing scorching sun and the super duper heavy wind it kind of is a recipe to send them into shock and even if it's not the summer don't, no grow light can actually replicate the brightness of even the sun on a cloudy day so really you have got to um, get them used to outside. Or what's gonna happen is you're gonna get your little babies that you have worked months to grow and baby and you're so excited about and you're gonna get them up to size, you're gonna go to plant them outside and they're gonna live a couple days and then they're gonna just go and they'll die. You might get a couple that are just particularly troopers and really amazing and grow, but for the most part, especially if you live somewhere here in Oklahoma, to put a baby plant outside that is not used to this Oklahoma wind is murder 100% of the time, <laughs> especially in the spring, because our wind, y'all, it's brutal. <laughs> so what you've got to do to get these little seedlings ready is you've got to take them outside a little bit at a time. It's called hardening off. You take them and you'll, for the first day, you're gonna put them outside for an hour. And you let them sit outside, you let them get exposed to the air, you let them get exposed to the sunlight and the wind, and then you bring them back inside after an hour. And make sure during this time of hardening off that you're watering them really well because um, they're getting wind blown more than they usually are. They're getting a lot of sun on them. They're not usually uh, used to getting and plants do something called transpirate. It's their version of sweating and they release water based on how much sunlight is, is beating down on them. So they're going to be naturally a lot thirstier during this process. So the whole week you're doing this, make sure you're taking extra care to really baby those plants. So then day two, you're gonna take them out for like two hours and then you're gonna bring them back in. Day three, three hours, a little bit at a time. And if at ever, at any point it looks like they're like, eh, not doing okay, then stay, stay the course. So like if I brought them out two hours and they were a little shocked at that, I would bring them out for only two hours again and maybe in a mild time of day. Um, you don't wanna push it with your babies. It's better to take your time. I know it's really hard because you're so excited about getting, um, getting those little babies out and ready to go in your garden. You've worked so hard, but I promise you it is worth it to take that week or two if it takes two weeks and actually go through this process of hardening off. You will have so much better luck at getting your little seedlings to live and then you're gonna leave them out. Once you get to the point where you're leaving them out, you increase that time by about an hour every day, then the next step is to leave them out overnight and to see how they do in a whole daylight cycle. And 
If they do okay and they're not showing signs of shock in a whole daylight cycle, then you can go ahead and plant them in the ground. And when you plant them in the ground, make sure that you give them lots and lots of good water so that their little roots can, can take root in their new soil. And that's really important. Let's see, I got two trays left. And if you're curious about what I'm planting in those, I've got some pink plume celery, some ruby red Swiss chard, is the season for greens. Um, large flat leaf Dutch cabbage, premium late flat Dutch cabbage, um, bright light Swiss chard, pink Swiss chard. It's the week of Swiss chard. Um, chives, Grandma Hadley's lettuce, y'all. This was delicious. Um, this was from Seed Savers Exchange, but I think I've seen it on MI Gardener too. This is really delicious. Um, Mizuna mustard, Ruby red leaf lettuce, um, Paris Island cause romaine lettuce, freckles romaine lettuce, new fire leaf lettuce. This is what I'm gonna eventually fill my green stock with for the first run is lettuces. Um, new Hanover ground cherry, ground cherries are so delicious. Um, Cimarron romaine lettuce, Japanese red mustard, Aunt Molly's ground cherry, Calabrese broccoli, um, Waltham broccoli, amazing cauliflower, and summer bib lettuce. So we've got lots of lettuce to start so that we can get our green stock going. It's gonna be wonderful. I'm so ready. <laughs> lettuce is a quick grower, so it's not gonna be long at all until we've got some delicious lettuce going. I'm really thankful that you joined me and hung out with me today as I'm planting and talking all things seed starting. If you have any other seed starting questions or gardening questions in general, or just random questions for me, um, feel free to leave your question in the comments and I will do my best to answer that in an upcoming video or in your comments. Be sure also in the comments to let me know what you're starting. This is by the way is zone 7B. So that's what I'm starting in 7B. Let me know your zone and let me know what you're starting. I would love to hear your favorite varieties. It's always fun. <laughs> Until next time y'all, uh, have a fantastic week and happy growing.